Adam Saxon here with Gyna Cube. Another week, another roundup. I've got some great stuff for you. Just a heads up, I'm going on a four week travel gauntlet across the world. So you're going to see some different settings over the next few weeks. So be aware of that. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dive in. Mike Carlo over at Power BI Tips has a blog post slash video that talks about using grids for visual placement inside of Power BI. This can be incredibly helpful, especially when you're trying to line things up the right way. Take a look at this video blog post and figure out what the best way is for you to use grids for that visual placement and get really good stunning reports that all line up. There were some cool things coming for Power BI desktop in this arena that were demoed at the Microsoft Business Application Summit, but they're not out yet, so this can really help you right now to take your reports to the next level. So be sure to check it out. Gilbert Q's got a blog post talking about what's under the covers of Power BI Desktop. From my perspective, I really love figuring out like the internals of things. When I was in support, I did a lot of memory debugging, I did a lot of code level investigations, and that's how I really learned the product. The more you look at that stuff, the more you can understand how things affect each other. So I really like this blog post. It talks about the different components that you're gonna see from analysis services to the mashup engine. So if you're curious about this or you're interested in internals just like I am, be sure to check out this blog post. Links down in the description below, as well as links for every item I'm talking about, including some bonus links. So go check it out. Matt Allington over at Accelerator BI's got a blog post talking about query folding. Yeah, we take that query, we fold it up. It's good stuff. This has to do more with like Power Query and inside of Power BI and Excel. This is more of an advanced topic, but the more that you understand about query folding, how it works, what affects it, the better off you're gonna be. Especially if you're doing things like incremental refresh where query folding is a must, otherwise you're gonna have a bad day with that. So be sure to check out this blog post to learn more about it. This is a great topic. Thanks, Matt, for putting it out there. All right, we have an R blog post. Just kidding. It's really Python. Tori Tompkins over at Adatus. Adatus? Let me, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. She's got a blog post where she's using Python inside of Power BI to visualize network data. This is using a couple of Python libraries, the big one being Network X, and she walks through how you can actually create this using Python support inside of Power BI. Just realize that Python support is a preview feature inside of Power BI Desktop, so you will have to enable that preview feature under the file and options area. But if you're curious about Python and you want to start digging in with it, this is a great place to start. Go check out this blog post. If you are using premium capacity, this post is for you. We released new metric reports for capacity resources in Power BI. So this is an app you can go install from AppSource and you need to be listed as a capacity administrator in order to get this to work properly. These are reports that will give you better insights into your capacity. So this has to do with resource allocation. What's actually happening from a CPU and memory perspective? Do I have memory thrashing? What are my refreshes doing? Which are my long refreshes? And there's gonna be updates to this over time to enhance this report, such as actual query statistics and linking that back to data sets, finding out which data sets are the heaviest, which workspaces are those a part of. This is really good stuff. I've talked with a bunch of customers that are looking at this now. They're very excited. This gives them more information to really understand what's happening inside of Premium. And stay tuned for updates to this, as well as more items coming from a Premium perspective and the ability for administrators to really understand what's going on. I'm very excited about this. Links, as always, down in the description below. All right, those are the items that I have, but I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Let me know down in the comments below or if you had an item that I missed that you thought was pretty awesome this last week. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.